Today I'm going to be sharing with you all all the tank tops and t-shirts that I knit for myself this summer. Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel, Knee Knits. My name is Amy and here I talk about all things knitting and today we're doing a recap video of everything that I knit this summer. More specifically, the garments that I knit for myself, including three tank tops and three t-shirts for a total of six finished objects that I'll be sharing with you guys. I'm going to be going over the patterns that I knit, the yarn that I used for each of them, some brief thoughts on how I felt about the knitting project as a whole and sort of that common combination of the yarn choice and the pattern. I'll be sharing with you as well how many times or how often I found myself wearing the piece and how it wore to show you guys if there's any pilling or obvious wear or stretching on the fabrics. And I will give you guys my opinion if I would knit the pattern again or use the yarn again or both. For me, I live near Boston in the US and my summer is winding down and I'm starting to transition into fall and I thought it would be a good idea to sort of recap all of the summer knits that I've really been focusing on for the past few months. If you live in the southern hemisphere, you guys are just getting into the beginning of spring and summer so this might serve as a good pattern inspiration video for you. Regardless, I hope you enjoy this style of video. I'm sort of doing it a little bit differently than usual. I'm in a different angle, trying to stand, trying to be more of a casual vibe video. So yeah, I will also say we're fighting daylight. I'm filming this after work and the daylight is dwindling. I do have some lamps up, which are, hopefully they're okay. <laughs> I think we'll be all right. If you are interested in looking at or watching all of the podcast episodes where I go into detail and sort of real time of me knitting these pieces, I am going to be linking in the description below all of the video links for each project. So you can go ahead and go to those podcast videos. All of my podcast videos have chapters. So once you open up the video, you can scroll through the bar and you should be able to jump directly to that specific project. I mostly use the pattern names. So if you want to find out everything about my camisole number five, you can just click each of the links below and then jump to cami number five in the scroll bar to watch those clips. I think that was everything I needed to cover in the intro, so let's get into the projects. The project I'm going to start with is my poppy tee, which is what I'm wearing right now. I am going to go through these projects in chronological order of how I knit them. So this was the very first pattern that I knit this summer. I started it in May. It looks like I started it on May 7th and then finished it on May 24th. So it was a really quick turnaround project for me. The Poppy T is a pattern by Petite Knit. It was a new release this year, and she knits it with Cardiff Cashmere Classic. It's a sport weight, 100% cashmere yarn. The suggested needle size is three and a half millimeters for the body and three millimeters for the ribbing. It's style is just a basic crew neck t-shirt. It has sort of like these mid-length sleeves and one of the signature design aspects of this t-shirt which is what drew me to the pattern in the first place was the shoulder construction you can see here that the shoulder cap and the sleeve cap sort of imitate a satin sleeve so you have the fabric going over the top of the shoulder here you have a line that goes down vertically along the arm like this and then on the back this is what it looks like on the back so I know this was one of the first times Petite Knit released a pattern with that shoulder construction. She has since released a few other patterns with that same shoulder construction, but at the time, this pattern really captivated me because I really wanted to give it a try. This pattern does come in sizes extra small through 5XL, and the suggested positive ease on the finished garment is about five centimeters or two inches. So for me, I knit the size small, which is my usual size with Petite Knit. And the yarn that I used was not the suggested yarn. Um, I didn't feel like knitting a t-shirt out of 100% cashmere. It just seemed too warm. I wouldn't want to wear it. And then obviously cost was also a factor. So the yarn that I picked for this project is called Kelborn Mullins Mojave. Kelborn Mullins Mojave is a sport weight cotton linen blend. It is 60% cotton and 40% linen. And it comes in a whole variety of colors. The color I use is called Electric Blue, which I love. It's so bright and bold. And I just really wanted something bright and bold in my wardrobe. I ended up using 3.8 skeins to knit the size small and my finished bust circumference of my knit ended up being 36 inches which did give me exactly a two inch amount of positive ease which was 
exactly as the pattern prescribed. So I was able to hit gauge pretty well with that yarn and the needle size I used with the yarn was also three and a half millimeter needles. So I matched the pattern needle size and was able to get gauge. I did make the sleeves and the body a little bit shorter than suggested and I tend to do that a lot. I'm only five foot zero. I'm pretty short and so just to match my body proportions I tend to make sleeves and bodies a little bit shorter than usual. So the length that I made this t-shirt from the center back to the bottom hem was 18 and a half inches. That's 47 centimeters and then my sleeve length from this underarm point was two and a half inches which is six and a half centimeters. Overall I really love the fit. I like the crew neck. I really like the increased details along the crew neck. This collar is picked up after you finish knitting all of the top part so it's not you know knit all at once. I also love how it looks on the shoulders. It just looks so classy. The yarn knitting with it I thought was a pretty pleasant experience. I'm not a fan of knitting with 100% cotton but I thought that this cotton linen blend was very comfortable to knit with and I didn't experience too much hand fatigue. One funny thing that I noticed with this yarn is that it shed a lot and I think I noticed it because of this super bright blue color. It just showed up on my couch, on my pants, and on my coffee table. Just kind of like electric blue dust that I just needed to quickly vacuum. I did add a thin elastic in the inside of the collar. One modification while I'm talking about the collar that I made was with the collar, the pattern suggests a folded collar, but I just did a single layer collar because I wanted that thinner fabric around my neck for this summer knit. So I did thread a little elastic through my tubular cast off, and I think it's keeping the collar intact pretty well. As for wearing this piece, I honestly did not find myself wearing this too often, which I feel bad saying because now that I've put this on for the video, I am really like falling in love with it all over again. And I think that's mostly because of the thickness and the warmth of the fabric. Even though it is cotton and linen, it just feels very warm for some reason. So I feel like there were not a lot of days this summer where I wanted to wear it. We did have a pretty hot and humid summer and I just didn't want to get sweaty in this t-shirt so I didn't often reach for it. You know, I reached for other t-shirts that I'd feel more comfortable sweating in and easily washing. So I didn't pull this out of my closet too much. Now that we're going into fall and the weather's cooling down, maybe I'll wear this more often. Like maybe it's a better transitional piece. I find that a lot with t-shirts, even when they are knit in sort of a summer fiber that they're just heavy. Like it is a knit item and it's going to be thick regardless. And just anytime there's extra fabric around my underarm, I just get really overheated quickly. So for that reason, I did not really wear this from finishing it at the end of May to now. I think this is maybe more promising for the fall, but not for the hottest days of summer. Also, because I haven't really worn this much, I haven't needed to wash this shirt so I cannot really say much about the washing process of it. The yarn is advertised as machine washable, so I think I will toss this in the machine wash with my other clothing on cold next time I wear it. And other than that, you know, I haven't really seen much pilling, haven't really seen much stretching of this. I would knit the poppy tee again. I thought it was a great pattern. I think it looks really nice and it's pretty easy to style. I would also knit with the Kelborn Woolens Mojave again. I thought it was a great yarn for the summer and I'm kind of curious how it would knit in a tank top because I do feel like it is a little bit heavy for a t-shirt in the heat of summer, but maybe for a tank top it would wear pretty well. Next up, I have my Cumulus Tee. The Cumulus Tee is a pattern by Petite Knit, and it looks like I started this on May 24th, which is hilarious because that's the same day that I cast it off my poppy tee, so I guess it was a very exciting day for me. <laughs> that was around my birthday, so I feel like maybe that makes sense, birthday cast on. And I finished this on July 3rd, so it took me a little bit over one month to knit. It is, you know, a raglan construction, top-down v-neck t-shirt. The suggested yarn is knitting for all of pure silk, and the suggested needle size is three millimeters. It's known for its v-neck, it's known for the i-cord details, also known as kind of being a difficult piece to knit because you have to knit the whole v-neck flat before joining in the round, and on three millimeter needles, it is a lot of knitting and purling. This pattern comes in sizes extra small through 3XL. The suggested amount of positive ease on the finished piece is about three to nine centimeters, which is one and a quarter to two and a half inches. 
I knit the size small, which like I said before, is my normal petite knit size. And my finished measurements gave me about an inch and a quarter of positive ease. So it looks like I hit gauge pretty well, was pretty much in that window of suggested ease. And that is what this looks like on me with about one and a quarter inches of positive ease. I shortened the sleeve length, I shortened the hem as usual. And I will note, I'm gonna be wearing all of these tops with my high-waisted jeans. So that gives you maybe a better idea of where this hits on my body in comparison to high-waisted pants, which is pretty much all I wear. These pair of jeans are my go-to summer shorts. Now I knit this with the suggested yarn. So I used Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. This is the color Dusty Artichoke and I knit it on the three millimeter needles. I use my metal Chowgu three millimeter needles and I will say I did have a hard time with all of the purling for the v-neck. I also experienced a little bit of rowing out along the v-neck edge. I think that was sort of influenced by the tension that's caused when you do the make one L and make one right increases. But from afar, you can't really tell that the rowing out is there. I think it blocked out pretty nicely. In general, I really like the look of this t-shirt. I think the raglan looks really nice. It's just a single raglan stitch. And it's kind of interesting because I feel like the raglan sits, it sort of starts at the back. And I don't know if that is like intentional and that is a good thing or if that's not intentional and it's kind of a bad thing that you can see it's kind of like pulling back a little bit, but it never really pulls back more than what you just saw. Like that was where it sort of settles naturally on my body. So you can see there how the beginning of the raglan increases sort of sits past the highest point of my like shoulder and neck. That's just something to note about the fit. I did get some questions about that when I posted this in my podcast. I didn't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing. That's just something to note if you are also making this pattern. Now I've worn this t-shirt a ton. This has definitely been one of my more favorite knits this summer. I feel like it's just so easy to throw on and it can be both a casual or a dressed up t-shirt. I've worn this with my slacks to work to give it more of a dressy feel. I've worn it with these denim shorts to give it a more casual feel. I knit it to a length where it looks pretty good French tucked and it also looks pretty good not French tucked. So right now I have the front tucked in and I think it looks pretty good. Can also pop that out and it sits sort of right at the top of my hips. I think if I were to re-knit this, I would add maybe one inch of length. I think when I was knitting the body, I was getting kind of tired of it. So I casted it off maybe a little bit too soon, but not enough for me to want to rip back and redo the edge. I would just, if I knit this a second time, make it a little bit longer just to make it easier to tuck in completely. I think right now it's a length where I can't really tuck this all the way in without it you know, popping out as soon as I lift my arms. But I did also make the sleeve length a little bit shorter than Petite Knit writes in her pattern. I think her sample goes really far down to like the bend of her elbow. And that was just something I didn't really desire, but I think it's a cool look if you're interested in it. I think it adds a lot of classiness to the t-shirt. I sort of went for the best of both worlds where it's, it's still pretty long compared to your average t-shirt sleeve, but it's shorter than, you know, all the way to the elbow. So has a little bit more of a casual style. When I knit this, I did leave out the I-cord decreases that are written in the pattern, both at the sleeves and at the hem. That is a pretty common modification from what I've learned from other knitters who've made this project and as well as looking at some Ravelry project pages. The decreases some people found just cinched in the I-cord too much to the point where it was uncomfortable to wear or they just didn't like how it kind of you know, you got a slight balloon effect if you decrease at the eye cord. So what I'm wearing now, I have no eye cord decreases and I really like the way it looks. I don't experience any flaring that Petite Knit says the eye cord decreases are meant to eliminate. So keep that in mind as well if you're knitting this project you might not want to do those eye cord decreases in the pattern. The Knitting for All of Pure Silk fabric I think is really cool in a lot of ways. It's very comfortable to wear. I think it's one of the main reasons why I wear this t-shirt a lot. It's just so comfortable. It feels very similar to, you know, commercially made t-shirts that I would assume are cotton. And I don't know why I'm comparing this to cotton, but I don't know, it just feels very light and it feels very comfortable and cooling. And it also has sort of like a matte finish that I really like. I feel like it looks different than a lot of 
other knit fabrics, I think in combination with the fact that it's a fingering weight yarn and it's knit on three millimeter needles, like you can barely see the stitches. And I think that makes it look really professional and easy to style. I will talk about the pilling a little bit because I am experiencing some pilling at the underarms. I will zoom in here to show you guys. In fact, one, one little piece of fiber is about to fall off. But yeah, there is some pilling around the underarm here, as you can imagine with all the friction that happens with <laughs> wearing a t-shirt. There is some pilling, it looks like, around like the bottom edge here where I usually have like a crossbody purse and that causes some friction with what I'm wearing. So I'll zoom in and show you guys that as well. And that's just after a couple months of wearing. So I can't imagine what this would look like after a couple years of wearing. I'm curious if this t-shirt is gonna last just because of how much fiber is coming off. I would hand wash this, which I haven't done yet. I feel like I'm very careful to not wear my knit t-shirts on very sweaty days. So I hope it's not like weird that I haven't washed these, but I just haven't worn them on sweaty days. I've worn them like in my apartment working from home or worn them in the office where the AC is blasting and the last thing I'm doing is sweating. But I would love to knit this pattern again. It just was very tedious. So part of me knows that it's not gonna be for a while before I knit this again. But I think this would be a really nice addition to my wardrobe in a neutral color, like a cream or a white or something like that. I probably would use the knitting for all of pure silk again, even though it's not my favorite yarn. I think if I were not to use that yarn again, I would consider Sanis Garantin Line in sort of a cream color because I've had a more positive knitting experience with that yarn. And it's also fingering weight and sort of has a similar finished look although it is composed of entirely different fibers, I would consider using that yarn instead. And that's everything about my Cumulus tee. Next up is my camisole number five. This is a pattern by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Camisole number five is a kind of unique style tank top with a very high neckline. It's mostly all over two by two ribbing and it's a fingering weight knit. The suggested yarn is Knitting for Olive Merino or Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino, which is the yarn that I use for this project. I use Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino in the shade Dusty Blue Whale. This pattern comes in sizes extra small through 2XL. It is a negative ease fitting tank top. It's recommended to have a negative ease of five to eight centimeters. That's about two to three inches. So it does sort of stretch to fit. And especially with the two by two ribbing, it looks really tiny when knitting it up. But once you block it, and then of course, once you wear it, it expands to the well fitting size, hopefully. <laughs> Now for this tank top, I knit the size small and I used how many balls of yarn? Looks like I used a little bit over two balls of the knitting for all of Cotton Reno. It says here in Ravelry, I use 2.14 balls. And I'm realizing now as I'm saying this, I forgot to tell you guys how much yarn I used for the Cumulus Tee. So just a quick backtrack for the Cumulus Tee, I used, I used 3.28 balls of the knitting for all of Pure Silk for that Cumulus Tee. Okay, but back to this tank top. So yeah, I use a little bit more than two balls of the Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino to make the size small. I didn't do any major pattern modifications. My finished length of this tank top from the underarm down to the hem is nine and three quarter inches. Now the pattern suggests the pattern suggests nine and three quarter inches length from the armhole. So I guess I did exactly what the pattern suggested for the length and I think it fits really well. I really was shocked with how it fit because like I said before, it looks really small when knitting it up, but then you put it on and it fits really well. So I followed most of the pattern directions for all of the double knitting. I think that is the spot in the pattern where a lot of people might get some difficulty. Now for my armhole, double knitting. I followed the pattern and the pickup rate that it suggested and it worked out really well. This is what I ended up with. I think the tensioning looks really good and I think that I would not change anything. But for the neckline, I did not have that experience. So for the suggested pickup rate for the neckline, you're suggested to do three out of every four stitches, but that ended up being way too many stitches for me. The collar, I finished the whole collar and it looked okay, but it just was a little bit ruffly. And especially at the back was where most of the flaring and the ruffling occurred. So I undid it all. I picked up the stitches two out of every three instead. And I think it looks much nicer like that. That's what I finished off with two out of every three and you can see that it lays perfectly flat no ruffling at 
tall and I think from the back it looks pretty good as well. Now this tank top because the top part comes in so much I do have to wear a strapless bra with it that's what I'm wearing now just a classic strapless underwire bra they're not my favorite but I found one that's pretty comfortable and I don't think that it's too low at the underarm you can see it poking out just a little bit there but honestly my arms are mostly down and even if it is a little gapey I don't personally mind but just keep that in mind for yourself this is a very deep armhole and I think a lot of people would have a lot of risk of having maybe something too low that they might not be comfortable with. So if you're knitting this pattern, I definitely suggest, you know, trying it on as you knit before you join in the round because of the two by two rib and it, how differently it fits when unblocked versus blocked. If you're concerned about the fit, I definitely recommend doing like a halfway block to try it on to see how you like the fit. I thought in general, the pattern was pretty easy to follow. I know my favorite things knitwear, sometimes her patterns are not the easiest to follow like in the document. I feel like a lot of her text headings kind of all look the same, so maybe at like one or two points I might have accidentally been looking at the wrong page of the pattern because I didn't have any like distinguishers to tell me that I was needing to look at a different part. So. I would also just note that about like pattern experience. The Knitting for Olive Cotton Merino yarn I thought was really enjoyable to knit with. I really liked it and would definitely want to use it again. I really like the combination of the merino and the cotton. This is a pretty high cotton content yarn, 70%, and then the rest, 30%, is a merino. And at first I was worried because that's a really high cotton content and I don't like knitting with cotton. I find it very rough on my hands and I don't find the texture enjoyable and then needles but I don't know 30% merino really changed the game I felt like I was knitting with I mean maybe not 100% merino but I felt like I was knitting with something pretty comparable to a fingering weight merino and it blocked out super nicely as well I feel like the stitches are super even there's not really a whole lot of you know gauge or tensioning issues that you can see so I really like how this fabric knit up would totally knit it again I did knit this tank top on three millimeter needles and compared to knitting on with the pure silk on three millimeter needles, this was definitely way more enjoyable. And I think the color is really cute. I've worn this tank top a few times. Again, not enough to wash it just yet, but it probably is due for a wash like soon today. I don't know, <laughs> but I've gotten a lot of compliments on it. It's definitely one of those tank tops that you can't tell is hand knit. It looks so professional. It looks really good. It's just a really classy style piece. I would knit it again if I wanted to, but I don't think I need more than one camisole number fives in my wardrobe. So just for that reason, I probably won't knit one again, but you know, for the pattern itself and the finished piece, I like it. And if I wanted another one, I would knit it again. And that's everything about camisole number five. Next up is my Kutar top. This is a pattern by Sari Nordland. And I started this pattern on July 3rd and finished it August 4th. So it took me exactly a month to knit. The Kutar top by Sari Nordland is this halter neck style top. It has this mirrored lace panel, or not mirrored, but it has the same lace panel on the front and the back. So the front two panels are symmetrical. This is actually an entirely symmetrical knit, like the front and the back are the same. So you could put this on either way and it'll fit the same way. This is a fingering weight tank top. The suggested needle size is three millimeters for the lace and then three and a half millimeters for the stockinette body. The suggested yarn is a merino linen. The yarn that I used in my project is Sanis Garn Line, which is a cotton linen viscose blend. And I knit this in the color pearl gray. This pattern comes in nine different sizes and the finished bust circumference ranges from 77 and a half centimeters to 152 and a half centimeters. That's equivalent to 30 and a half to 60 inches. And the recommended ease on this is zero. So I knit in between sizes two and three because if I knit a size two, that was gonna give me some negative ease. And if I knit the size three, it was gonna give me a little bit of positive ease. So I actually decided after I knit the front two or the top two panels to do the in-between size because for sizes two and sizes three, these panels are exactly the same. It's the same stitch count. So the difference in sizing comes with where you cast on at the underarm. So I just cast on a number of stitches at each underarm that was right in between 
the stitch count for sizes two and three and that sort of gave me the hybrid size and my purpose of that was to get a truly zero ease garment on me and I think I did a pretty good job. It looks like my measurements after blocking I ended up with a 33 inch circumference which is actually giving me a little bit of negative ease but I think this will stretch out over time. This yarn does not have any elasticity at all. In fact, I had a lot of issues knitting with it because there are a lot of loose stitches that just would not tighten up and this pattern does have a lot of construction aspects that I found to be a little bit tricky to navigate. So in terms of the construction, you do start with a provisional cast on at the neckline, you knit the front panel flat, and then you do the same for the back panel, and then you have to join both of those panels at the underarms. There is a continuous sort of I-cord edge that goes all around the armhole, which is why some of the joining at the underarm was finicky, because you have to cast on while doing an I-cord at the same time, and I found a lot of tensioning issues over in that area. Area. I also had some tensioning issues with my provisional cast on once I put those stitches back on the needles and knit them into the I cord they were kind of loose and I had to manually tighten them and also with the construction of this I think the directions tell you to knit a pretty long stockinette panel before joining at the underarm and I found that my panel was too long it was actually going to be really really low and to counteract that I had to make my straps really really short so my neckline is a little bit higher than the pattern photos show because the straps are supposed to be about twice as long as mine my straps ended up being about three inches i think the suggested length for the straps is about six inches if i had done six inch straps you know this would be way lower and then therefore the underarm would be way lower where it would show all of my undergarment. So I didn't want that. And that was something that I probably could have fixed earlier if I caught it. I just didn't think to try it on. So that's why I suggested with camisole number five to try it on. I suggest it with this to sort of hold it up or try it on and see where it's hitting at your underarm and make those adjustments as necessary. Now knitting with the Santa Scarn Tin Line I thought was really enjoyable. I did have to go down in needle size to meet gauge for this pattern with that yarn. So I knit the lace panel in two and a half millimeter needles and then did the body in three millimeter needles. This tank top does have a folded hem at the bottom, which I think looks really nice. There is a little pearl ridge at the bottom of the hem too, which I think makes it look, look really classy. And my length from the underarm down to the hem is 10 inches. So that's what 10 inches looks like on me in comparison to my pants. And I used just over two balls of the Tin Line for this. It looks like I used 2.04 balls of yarn so I just barely cracked into that third skein to knit this. Now in terms of wearability I find this tank top to be super wearable. I do like I said before have to wear a strapless bra with it. I think I could get away with a bra with straps because of how high this comes up. The um, straps would only really poke out here but then it immediately would get covered again I hope so. I think there's a little bit more flexibility with undergarments and this tank top. Again, I've talked about how it's a little bit low for me at the underarms, so that's on me, but if I would knit it again, I would make it a little bit higher, and that would also make it a little bit easier to wear. I think you can style this both casually and professionally. I have worn this to work, and I think because it has the very high neckline, appropriate for a professional setting. I also really like how I ended up with the high neckline because these lace eyelets kind of hit right above my chest area, so I feel like you know, if they were lower, you would be able to see my undergarments through the holes, which would not necessarily be work appropriate. So I really like the high neckline in that regard. The fabric is super comfortable to wear. I think out of all of the fibers that I'm gonna mention in today's video that this is the most wearable hot weather fiber or yarn. It's just so cooling and breezy and it just feels like, it feels like nothing if, in a good way. Like it's just so, nice on the skin even on really hot days it's really flowy i love the drape and i think that it was a good choice for even a lace pattern like this i think it shows off the stitch definition pretty well so i definitely would use this yarn again as for the pattern i don't know if i would knit it again just because of how fiddly the construction was i do think it's a beautiful piece i just think maybe i don't have the patience for another complex construction tank top i prefer simpler things but i am really happy with the end result
I will say I have experienced this piece sort of grow over time the more I wear it and like put it on and take it off. It definitely is growing. It's definitely not going to spring back. So I would also keep that in mind if you're interested in working with this yarn. It's definitely something that's just going to grow over time. Haven't really seen any pilling issues and it does have sort of like a shine to it. So also keep that in mind if you want to use this yarn. It's like shiny, but, <laughs> and that's all I can say about my Kutar top. Next is my Audrey top. This is a pattern by Petite Knit. I recently finished this one. I don't remember when I started it. So let me look at my Ravelry page. Okay, it looks like I started it July 20th and then finished it August 11th. So a little bit under a month to knit. The Audrey top is also one of Petite Knit's newer summer patterns. It is a DK weight halter style tank top. She knits it in a 100% linen fingering weight yarn. And I also knit mine in a 100% fingering weight linen yarn held double on four millimeter needles. So I knit mine in Quince & Co Sparrow in the color Eclipse. This pattern comes in sizes double extra small through 5XL. It's suggested to have zero to five centimeters of positive ease, which is equivalent to zero to two inches of positive ease and suggest a needle size is four millimeters. Now this tank top is knit bottom up. I feel like it has more of a casual vibe because it has raw stockinette edges. There's no ribbing, there's no folding, there's no eye cords. So it does naturally curl a little bit at the bottom, but I think it's kind of cute. I feel like it just adds a cool design element to the tank top. So you start in the round and you knit bottom up until you get to the underarm points where at that point you knit the front and the back panels flat and then you add the i-cord straps i think you knit them straight from the top of the front panel and then you connect them in the back just with like a whip stitch or a kitchener stitch and the front panel has more of a gradual slope and hits i guess right about here at the neckline the back is a little bit different so you can see that the back it starts the decreases similar to the front but then it has sort of a straighter panel to bring it all the way up to the back of the neck there so this is not a symmetrical piece there is a clearly defined front and back which i kind of like i think it fits pretty nicely now i knit this with 100 percent linen yarn and this was my first time ever knitting with 100 percent linen yarn and i I honestly enjoyed the experience. I made sure to knit with birchwood needles because the linen is very slippery and although I normally knit on metal needles I just thought it'd be better to knit with the birchwood and I was glad I made that decision. I found it to be very comfortable to knit with. The yarn itself doesn't stretch. It's more like a cord rather than yarn, but I didn't find it too difficult to knit with. I didn't find it too rough on my hands. I might attribute that to the fact that this is knit with DK weight. So maybe knitting with just the fingering weight would be a little tough on my hands, but as the DK weight, I thought it was really comfortable and I was able to sort of whip through this piece pretty quickly. I didn't do any pattern mods at all. So this is exactly a size small, including the measurement from the bottom hem to the underarm. I did exactly what was in the pattern. I followed the pattern exactly for the front and back panels and my straps are exactly the pattern dimensions, which I think is three inches. And I really like how it fits. I did say before that size small is my normal petite knit size. And in terms of positive ease, I have exactly two inches of positive ease on me so that's what this looks like and I think it's a really good fit I feel like I wouldn't want it any bigger I feel like I could go a little bit smaller but I feel like that lines up exactly with the pattern suggestion of zero to two inches of positive ease so yeah it fits pretty well I did have some stretching out initially after first wearing this I wet blocked it just by soaking it in a bowl of water and then laying it flat to dry and then I wore it for a day and it kind of stretched out a bit which is I think expected with linen and other plant fibers and it stretched out to the point where it was gaping a lot at the front and I was worried that it was too big but I ended up putting this in the washing machine with my normal clothes. This is a machine washable yarn and it kind of shrunk back up to its original size and fits great again and I haven't really experienced much stretching out of it since. So if you knit this with that same linen yarn, 
and maybe it's stretching out too much, try throwing it in the washing machine. I think that might help with your problem because it really helped with mine. Now I find this fabric super comfortable to wear. I wore this a few times already in some really hot and humid temperatures and environments and I barely felt this on my skin. It was super cooling, super comfortable. I didn't feel like constricted at all. It's just a really nice fabric and I would want to knit so many more things in this linen yarn. The linen yarn did sort of lose some of its shine and just a little bit of its color saturation after machine washing it. So also keep that in mind if you're interested in using the same yarn that after you wash it, it's gonna be just a little bit faded, but really nothing dramatic. I think you can still tell that this is just a, a black tank top and I think it looks really nice. I've been wearing this untucked with my high-waisted shorts and I think it looks really good. Again, it definitely has that more casual summer style. I'd love to knit a second one in a lighter color and I'm gonna continue wearing this until it's too cold to wear it anymore. So big fan of the Audrey top. Definitely recommend the pattern and the project. My last summer knit is this Lanakai Summer Tea. This is a pattern by Sally Yi. I just finished this last week, I think, and I've been wearing it a ton. It's awesome, I love it. <laughs> but yeah, so the Lanakai Summer Tea is an oversized fingering weight t-shirt. It is a circular yoke construction, top down, one piece, and it does have some raglan shaping around the sleeves and the underarm, so sort of a combination circular yoke and raglan. This pattern comes in seven sizes, and the finished bust circumference ranges from 99 to 160 centimeters, which is equivalent to 39 to 65 inches. The recommended amount of positive ease is pretty large. It's a pretty oversized flowy t-shirt, so 20 to 25 centimeters of positive ease is suggested. I believe that's about 8 to 10 inches. I really liked this pattern because of how the oversized fit combined with the drapey fabric and I just thought it was a really cute pattern and a really casual piece that I could add to my wardrobe. The suggested yarn is a linen yarn, but I did not use a linen yarn for this. In fact, I used a bamboo sock from Sorella Yarn. This is a 80% superwash merino and 20% bamboo blend. I'm using the color Pinot Noir, which is this really nice sort of faded, purpley, warm purple color. And I really like it because it's the tonal and I feel like the hand dyed yarn in combination with the simple lace pattern that goes across the chest and as well as the overall all stockinette, I think it was just a really good combo. I think I really like how this t-shirt looks. So I knit the size two and I use four millimeter needles on the body, which is a bigger needle size than suggested. I just needed to do that to hit gauge. The suggested needle size is three and a half millimeters for the body. So pretty easy pattern to follow. I love how there are schematics in the pattern and there is a chart for this lace, even though it's really simple, there is a chart to follow. Actually, I think it's only a chart. I don't think it's written out, So, but it is very simple. So maybe if you've never read a chart before, give this one a try because it's just a very short repeat. I knit the size 2 and even though it was supposed to give me 8 to 10 inches of positive ease, I ended up with a positive ease of about 4 inches. So really not not even close and maybe that was on me, maybe my gauge truly just wasn't what it was supposed to be, but I still really like the fit. I feel like I still get that drapey oversized t-shirt fit that I wanted, although I can imagine that it would be more exaggerated if I had actually hit gauge and if I actually had eight to 10 inches instead of just four of positive ease. Knitting with the yarn I thought was a pretty pleasurable experience. You know, it is 80% merino wool, so it was pretty much knitting kind of like with a sock yarn or with a 100% superwash merino, very similar, you know, very bouncy, springy. I would say the bamboo content definitely made it kind of slippery and shiny. I think the bamboo also added a little bit of heathering on it, which I really liked, and it feels very soft and drapey. So soft where I think I might experience some pilling in the future, but I haven't really worn this enough to see any pilling yet. An interesting thing with this t-shirt is when I blocked it after finishing knitting it, I didn't really experience many dimensional changes in the finished piece, even though superwash wool is known to grow. I feel like if anything, it just sort of made everything lay flat, but my measured dimensions of the t-shirt were the same pre and post blocking. So I thought that was interesting. I'm even second guessing if I measured correctly, but I will keep an eye on this and maybe after wearing it for a little while, I will share if it has grown with time. 
Now in terms of this yarn being a summer fiber, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. This was part of Sorella Yarn's spring collection, so it is considered their spring you know, base or their seasonal spring base. And I know spring is not summer, spring is a little bit cooler than summer, so I would say that this is definitely a warmer yarn. I would not want to wear this in the heat of summer. I think it's better for those transitional times like spring or fall. I'm actually anticipating myself to get a lot of wear out of this t-shirt this upcoming fall. It just feels really easy to throw on with any pair of pants or shorts and it looks really good because it has, you know, a high crew neck. I can wear, you know, anything under it. I don't have to worry about undergarments like I have to with my other tank tops. And it would look really cute with like a jacket if you need an extra layer or if you just wanna wear a warmer t-shirt, this would definitely be a great pick. I knit this t-shirt to pretty much pattern. I did sort of the same length that I always do for my knits. So you can see it hits at pretty much the same length everything else does right at the top of the hips. This one is definitely tuckable if I need it to be tuckable. And I think it is a good sleeve length as well. I did follow the pattern for the sleeve length. So this is not shortened. This is as written. The sleeves are pretty short once you divide for the sleeves. I think you just do an inch of knitting and then go straight into the ribbing and I will say all of the ribbing is twisted rib or half twisted rib which I really love I think it looks really polished for the cast on I just did a standard long tail cast on but for all of the cast offs I did an Italian bind off at both the sleeves and the hem just to give it that polished look I would knit this t-shirt pattern again I really thought it was an enjoyable knit I really like wearing it and I know I'm gonna wear it a lot so if I'm looking for another t-shirt I can totally see myself making this again and in the same yarn different color but I think it's a really good wardrobe piece it's just it's basic enough where I feel like it fits in pretty well with my wardrobe but it also has just enough visual interest where you know it's a little bit something something you know it looks fun <laughs> so yeah that's my Lanakai summer tea and those are all of the tees and tanks that I knit for myself this summer. I hope you enjoyed this style of video. Like I mentioned earlier, if you want more details on all of these projects, feel free to check out my Ravelry or the other podcast episodes, which will all be linked in the description box. Or you can leave me a comment with a question and I'll do my best to answer it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.